What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we're gonna to be taking an in-depth look at the 2021 Ford Explorer ST. Now the reason why I'm so excited about this vehicle is because it is a powerhouse, powered by a three liter twin turbo engine. Now this is a very in-depth video going over all of the features of the vehicle, over every little detail. If you're looking for something short, sweet, you know, the Coles Notes version, check down in the description below for that link. Before we get into it, I wanna thank you guys as always for helping to support the channel. If you're enjoying the content, make sure that you give it a like. Please consider sharing it with your social network, so places like Facebook, and then also make sure that you subscribe with the notifications on. The reason why, I've got some pretty damn cool giveaways planned. The next one coming up, when I get to 5,000 subscribers, going to be giving away an exotic car driving experience, or two, depending on how quickly I get there, which means that you will be able to test drive either a Ford Mustang GT, maybe you'll get behind the wheel of a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, it's gonna be an exciting time. But guys, let's dive right into it and see what the 2021 Explorer Sport has to offer. Taking a look at the key fob, so this is the ST, so you, as you can see, we do have the ST emblem there. And looking at the actual fob itself, so at the very top, we've got our unlock button, our lock button, remote start, our lift gate, as well as our horn or a panic alarm button. Now the vehicle itself is equipped with an emergency access key, so if we ever need to lock the glove box or get emergency access to the vehicle, we've got the capabilities to do that. In order to remote start the vehicle, all we're gonna do is press the lock button once and then the circle button twice. Now to remote start, in order to cancel the remote start, we're just going to press the circle button once. Now the Explorer ST, there is only one engine choice available. So looking at it, it is a three liter twin turbo. From a power perspective, this thing's got the ability to push out 400 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque. When it comes down to fuel type in the Explorer ST, now looking at the vehicle, 400 horsepower, 415 foot-pounds of torque, that's running off of a premium fuel. Now having said that, do you need to use a premium fuel? Absolutely not. The minimum recommendation from the manufacturer is just your regular 87 gas, so just regular fuel that you can use inside of this thing. So you don't need to worry about using a premium fuel. In order to fill up the tank, it is on the driver's side. Very straightforward. There is a little button there. We're just gonna press that in order to open it up, and it's a capless system. So all you're gonna do is insert the hose. Once you're done refueling, get it run, click, lock it back into place, you're set to go from there. Now the Explorer ST does have factory towing included in there as an option, which is a huge benefit because this vehicle can tow up to 5,600 pounds. Now on top of that, with factory towing, it's going to extend the blind spot system. So the one that lets you know if anybody's entered the blind spot at either side of the vehicle, when you enter the dimensions of your trailer, it's also going to cover that blind spot to extend to the trailer as well. There are a few different ways that we can open up the trunk of the vehicle. So looking at the actual key fob, we can double press this button in order to be able to open it up. But there are two, well actually technically three other ways. There's one inside the vehicle and then two more outside. The vehicle itself is equipped with a button just underneath. So if we look at the R in the Explorer, just underneath there's a little arrow. We can press that button to open and close. And there also is a foot activated lift gate. So if your hands are full because you've got kids, groceries, whatever the case may be, all you're gonna do is just slide your foot underneath and step back. And as you can see, foot activated power lift gate. So really, really nice. Now as we start to look in the back, so along the right hand side, so we've got our buttons there in order to be able to lower the seats individually or together. We've also got a 12 volt adapter in the back and some cargo hooks if we need to use a cargo net. Now on top of that, as you can see, these are actually removable trays to give us a little bit of storage, but watch what happens here. So we've got removable storage trays and we've also got the ability to pop that guy off. So now we've got even more storage space. And then underneath, let's just lift this guy up for a second. And as you can see, we've got our mini spare tire. When it comes down to cargo spacing inside of the vehicle, this is what we're looking at when the second and third rows are both up. So if you need that six or seven passengers with a little bit of cargo space, this is the max cargo space that we're looking at. Now let's compare that cargo space to when that third row is folded down. So as you can see there, we've got a little bit more room there if we need to store some extra things. Now one thing to point out, those third row seats, they can be folded down individually. So if you need a five seat or six seat or whatever the case may be, you still can fold it down. But look at the max cargo space there with that third row folded down. 
Okay, and our last view is going to be with the second and the third row folded down, but look at how much cargo space we've got as a possibility in this thing. So tons of space, nice width, nice depth in comparison there. Now, as I mentioned, so there are a few different configuration options for the vehicle. We can fold down each seat individually as well, so we can have the right side completely up while the left side's down if you need to store some different things. Now the seats in the Explorer ST for that third row are power seats. So you can power fold each one down individually. Just off to the right hand side, so the passenger side, we've got three individual buttons. One for the left seat, one for the right seat, and one that can fold down both. And all you're going to do, literally, it's just to press and hold for a second. And then as you can see there, the seats are going to power down. So you do have the ability to either power fold them down simultaneously, both of them, or you can fold them either the left or the right side individually. Now, folding down that second row seat is also a very straightforward process. There are a couple different ways that we can do it. So technically, we've got one way to fold it down and then one way to move it forward. So we've got the option there just along the side. As you can see, we've got a little lever. We're just going to crank that lever up. And as you can see, the seat is now folded down flat, so very straightforward. But if you need to actually get inside of the vehicle, Let's lift you up there. So as you can see, we've got a button just along the top there. So we would press that button in order to be able to get into the back row a little bit easier. Now, when it comes down to third row spacing inside of the vehicle, so the seat itself, the driver's seat and the passenger seat are set up for people that are six feet tall. And then in the back here, I still have a little bit of knee room. So about an inch or so between my knees and the back of the second row seats. I've got some, a decent amount of foot room. And then up overhead, I've got about three inches of head clearance space. So if you have some taller passengers, they may be able to get away with sitting in the back, ideally sitting in those front two seats though. When it comes down to the second row, there is quite a little bit of space inside of this vehicle. The driver's seat is set up for somebody six feet tall. This seat is set up for somebody six feet tall and there's still room in the back. So tons of space there up overhead. I've only got about an inch, inch and a half of headroom left. So if you have somebody that's a little bit taller, they might have to sit in the front seat instead because you can lower those seats a little bit more. Now, when it comes down to it, there's not a ton of stuff back here. We do have the ability to recline the seat a little bit if we need to. And just in between our legs, we've got the ability to roll the seat forwards and backwards a little bit more just to create a little bit of extra room. From a technology perspective in the back seat, there are a few things that we've got. Now, there are a few configuration options that we have as well. So the one that we're looking at, this configuration option are the dual captain's chairs. And as you can see, we do have a little console in the middle. However, there is an option for a bench seat. So if you need a seven seat configuration, this is absolutely a great choice. So you can get that bench seat in the middle, two seats in the back, and then two seats in the front. So from a control perspective, there are some things that people in the back can control. As you can see, we've got our fan control, so our fan speed. We can turn the power on or off and determine whether it's going to our face or to our feet. And we can also control the temperature. Over and above that, we've got a few USB ports. So our USB and USB-C, as well as our built-in inverter. So if you need to plug a traditional wall outlet in the back, you can. On top of that, we have a couple pockets in the back if we need to store a few things. And then just along the back window, so that rear window on both sides, we do have the ability to throw up a sunshade. So really, really useful, especially on those really bright days. Just along our driver's side door. So really, really love the look that we've got it. We've got our B&O, so our Bang and Olufsen speaker system. On the very top though, as you can see, we've got our unlock and our lock buttons, our three different settings for our seat memory. So that's really, really nice. You've got the ability to set up the driver's seat, set up the steering wheel and the side view mirrors. Then you can press and hold either one of these to save in your personal profile. So if you have multiple drivers, this is very useful. Now from there, we've got the ability to power fold those side view mirrors. We can kill off power to the back window and then we've got the ability to adjust our side view mirrors. Along the side, as you can see, we do have a trunk release button as well as the ability to turn on our fog lamps and then we can figure out what we're doing with our running lamps. So we can either turn them off. I either recommend these two settings, either turn them off or keep it in auto. And that's automatically going to turn on the daytime or the nighttime running lamps, depending on how bright it is outside. And from there, we've also got our plus and minus buttons, which are going to be good to determine how dark or how bright that screen is. So we've got the ability to either darken it or brighten it up as necessary. Adjusting the driver's seat in the Explorer ST is a very straightforward process. It is a power adjustable. So just along the side, we've got a series of different levers. The one at the very front is going to allow you to bring the seat forwards and backwards. We can lift it up or we can go down. The second lever is going to be for our backrest. So we can bring that backrest forwards or backwards to make it more comfortable. And then lastly, we've also got a button for our lumbar support, so power lumbar. So we can move that back and forth in order to adjust our lumbar. Really, really comfortable settings there. 
In order to adjust the steering wheel in the Explorer ST, very straightforward process. Along the left-hand side, we've got a little dial pad, and it is telescopic, so we can use that in order to lift the steering wheel up or down, move it backwards, or bring it more towards us. So lots of options there, and it is a power adjustable with memory, so you can adjust your seat, adjust your steering wheel, and then save it to your own personal profile. You know, this is the SYNC 3 screen that we're going to be met with when the vehicle's first turned on. So as you can see there, the vehicle itself is equipped with factory navigation. You do have the ability to run off of Android Auto or Apple CarPlay instead, if that's what you prefer. But looking there, we've got a beautiful map display. My phone is connected, so as you can see there, we do have the connection there. We can look at basic contacts, etc. And then this is going to be what's actively playing. So whether that's the radio, our phone, whatever the case may be. Up along the very top, though. So we go to menu for a second there. And as you can see, we have a ton of different options. Now, this is for navigation specifically because as you can see there at the top we were looking at the map so by pressing that menu button there we've got a ton of options so look at our screen list navigation settings are going to be the big one there basic settings we've got our map preferences so 3d city model breadcrumbs are interesting so with breadcrumbs enabled as we start to travel it'll leave little dots of the direction of the routes that we've taken point of interest icons if you want gas stations coffee shops things like that to show up we can turn that setting on Moving into our route preferences, so we've got a few options there. Route preferences, we've got the ability to select between fastest, shortest, most eco-friendly, use HOV lanes, avoid freeways, toll roads, ferries, tunnels, etc. Now one of the nice things about whatever settings you have there, it's going to automatically and dynamically update the map. So if you don't like to take toll roads like the 407, etc., we can hit avoid toll roads and we're going to make sure that that map is completely going to avoid those roads. Last one is going to be our navigation preferences, so our guidance prompts, we can change between voice and tones, voice or tones. And that's what's going to happen when you come up to an upcoming turn. As the voice and tone, it's going to say, turning in 200 meters. And then it'll give you a little chime versus the voice versus just the chime. So really a matter of preference, which one happens there. And moving back, other ones to point out are going to be our home and work addresses. So with these addresses set up, what we can do is actually press the button on the steering wheel for our voice there, and we can just say navigate home, and it'll automatically update the navigation to take us to our home or work address. So really recommend making sure you set those ones up. And then jumping back to that home screen again. As we start to move into our audio settings, let's check that out for a second. So our basic audio settings, we've got the ability to choose between our sources, so AM, FM, Sirius XM, my phone, navig uh, my phone audio there, so we've got a number of different options there. As we move back into some basic settings, we have got the ability to tune a few different ways. So we can tune using this by direct tuning. So we can type in a radio station there and hit enter and it's changed the station. We've also got a little tuning knob down there so we can use that instead. Or we can also use the button in order to tune using our voice. So tons of different ways we can do it. Really, really nice there. If you wanna save a preset, once you've changed to the station that you'd like to, whether it's AM, FM, Sirius, etc., we're just gonna press and hold for a second. And as you can see, oh, and it saved it. Very, very straightforward in order to set this thing up. Next up, adding a phone is a very straightforward process. So if we click phone, if we click on phone for a second, as you can see there, it's giving us the option to turn on a phone or add in a phone, I should say. So we're gonna hit Search add for phone. Your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay. Next up on your phone, whether it's Android or Apple, you want to make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. And watch what happens. Oh, Ford Explorer. So we're just gonna connect. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so we want to make sure that the pin numbers match, and in this case they do. So we're just going to hit pair. And we're going to hit yes on the screen. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so as you can see, automatically contact downloads. We want to make sure that that happens to automatically download our contacts to the vehicle. And it's also asking us if we want to allow our contacts and favorites to sync. We absolutely want to do that. And as you can see, my phone is now connected. It's really that simple. So we can take a look at my contacts, my phone. We can go to my keypad, use Siri, my text messages, etc. So really, really neat. One thing to point out is if we look at the app screen here. Actually, actually wait for this to load up. And there we go. So go to our app screen there. As you can see, LiveX Live. Certain apps will work through their middle screen. So we've got LiveX Live, Spotify, Waze, things like that will work directly through the middle screen. So I love that capability. In order to be able to remove a phone, we're just going to go to settings. And if you're at the top, all we're going to do is scroll down to connectivity, click on our phone. We can view devices. We can change the tones and things like that. But if we go view devices, we've got all of the connected devices there. And we can click on it to either disconnect or fully remove. If we fully remove, as you can see, jumping back in a phone, the phone is now completely disconnected. 
factory navigation, very straightforward, very similar to what we just finished seeing in the home screen there. So we've got the ability to easily search for an address just by pressing search and we can start entering the address. Now it is an autocomplete, so you don't necessarily have to type in the full address, but as you can see there, we do have the address showing up, so we can just click on any of these things, and we can either save it or we can just start. So if we start, it'll build the route for us based off of our preferences. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. And it tells Please us where to go. to the highlighted route, and then the route guidance will start. Thanks, Sing3. So we've got a couple options from there. We can cancel the route out. We can look at some basics. We can zoom out. Canceling the route. Yes, let's cancel it out for a second. And it is now gone. That's, for, that's straightforward. We can use this hotkey in order to navigate to home or work. Very straightforward. Jumping back into our menu. So very similar to what we just saw on that home screen. And that's going to be the basics of the navigation system. As we start to move into some other settings, there are a ton of options here. So let's start off at the very top with our basic assistance settings. So we've got some things for driver assistance. So we've got our cruise control. Now we have three different modes there. So we've got our normal. So that's going to be just your regular normal cruise control. We've got the adaptive, which is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. So let's say if you set it at 120 kilometers an hour, if the vehicle in front of you breaks, yours will automatically slow down. If they pick up speed, get out of the way, yours will automatically pick back up to speed again. Intelligent cruise control takes the adaptive to the next level. So we've got an option here for tolerance level. So when tolerance comes up in a second there, we can select what our tolerance level is and what that means. Let's say if you're traveling with the adaptive cruise control on at 60, at let's say 80 kilometers an hour, the posted speed limit drops from 80 to 60 and we've set a tolerance of 10. So what would happen is the vehicle would automatically and intelligently drop us down to 70 kilometers an hour instead. So really, really neat system. I love the intelligent side of things things. And as we start to move down, we've got our lane keeping system, which also works three different ways. First way is going to be a steering wheel shake. So actually, let's go to the alert first. So what's going to happen there is if you start to veer over without signaling, you'll get a little shake on the steering wheel, almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. When you get the aid, what'll happen is if you start to veer over, it'll automatically take over the steering wheel and it'll recenter you for you. The last one is the alert and the aid, which will give you both. So it'll give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake while at the same time recentering you and pulling you back into your lane. From there, we've got alert intensity, so either a high, normal, or low, and that's going to be the intensity of the steering wheel shake. A couple other things to point out. We've got our pre-collision assist with our distance indication, active braking. If the vehicle senses a potential collision with active braking, it'll automatically brake for you. If for whatever reason it can't brake in time or it wants to try to get out of the way, evasive steering will take over. It'll take over the steering wheel and try to pull you out of the way in order to either eliminate or minimize the impact of the collision. From there, we've got our speed sign recognition and that's something that's going to show up. I don't know if you can see it right there right there <laughs> but it is the local speed sign setting which is really really nice you can turn that one on or off from there we've also got our rear camera so rear camera our enhanced parking aid is going to be this so what that looks like over and above so we can turn that off so that we don't see all of that extra jazz as we start to back up really a matter of preference there and from there we've got our blind spot system so our blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle so if we turn that system on and off for a second just so you can see so see how that highlights orange lets us know if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle let's turn it back on for a second there There you go. So as you can see there, so it lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot either side. So it's really, really useful setting to have. Okay, from there, we've got our trailer blind spot. So as I was mentioning before, if we enter the dimensions of the trailer into the vehicle, not only will it cover the actual vehicle, but it's also going to cover the length of the trailer, letting us know if anybody's entered the blind spot in the vehicle or the trailer. Trailer sway control. If the vehicle senses that there's a trailer sway going on, it'll automatically apply braking to the engine in order to be able to control that sway. Cross traffic alert. If the vehicle senses a potential collision because somebody's coming perpendicular from us to so the left or the right side, you'll get a message on screen letting you know that there's a potential collision. Reverse brake assist. If we're backing up and if you don't see an obstacle or the you see it or not, but if there's a possibility that there's going to be a rear end collision from you backing up, with this enabled, the vehicle will automatically brake. From there, we've also got a driver alert, which is tied into the lane keeping system. So if we get too many warnings about going into our lane without signaling, the vehicle will tell us that we should probably take a break. So it's very smart from that perspective. 
Actually, I think that was, that's it there. Excellent. Next up is going to be our 911 assist, which we've already gone over. Vehicle will automatically dial 911 if it senses a collision. From there, we've got some basic vehicle settings. So our sound settings, so our treble, mid-range, bass, etc our basic clock settings. So we can get into the clock setting two ways. We can either press the clock setting there, or we can just press on the time at the top. And as you can see, we can either increase or decrease an hour or a minute, change between AM and PM, or we can switch between that 24 or that 12 hour time mode. So if you prefer the military time, you've got the capabilities to do that. Automatic daylight savings time. What that's going to do is it's automatically going to spring us forward or fall us back an hour, depending on the time of year automatic time zone update if we go to the west coast or east coast whatever the case may be it's automatically going to change the time based off of our gps location for the vehicle okay there we go and basic radio now this button is actually dynamic so we have am or fm that's selected it's going to look like this so you've got the the radio text that's there and the number of preset pages so i always recommend preset pages updated to five or the maximum setting and the reason why when it updates i'll show you something three, two, one, and there we go. Now let's look at this. Now we all of a sudden have up to 30 individual presets that we can save here, so really useful. But watch what happens when we change the source to Sirius XM. Let's jump back into our audio settings for a second there and go back into now all of a sudden it's changed from radio to Sirius XM. So we've got a number of options. We can set certain categories. We can turn out a parental lock. We can go different starts, lock channels, skip channels. So there are a ton of different options that are available there. And literally all we did was we went from our AM FM into our Sirius. So we've got the ability to change out certain settings, which is really, really neat. From there, we've got some basic vehicle settings. So some basic vehicle settings, we've got the ability to select how long the vehicle idles for, so our 30 minute max. Rear occupant alert, let's listen to what that sounds like. Really, really neat. So it's a super useful feature. From there, we've got easy entry exit. What that's going to do is when you turn the vehicle off, it's automatically going to slide your chair backwards. So that seat adjustment in order for you to easily get out of the vehicle. The My Key system, what that's going to let you do is create certain limitations for the key fob. So one of the big benefits of that is let's say if you're lending your car out to somebody and you don't want them to speed excessively, or if you want to pull a prank on a spouse, you've got the ability to set up certain limitations for an individual fob. You can set it so that they maybe can't go faster than 100, they maybe the radio can't turn on until they tr they actually click on their seatbelt. So there are a lot of features and functionalities there. Remote start setup. You've got the ability to remote start directly through the key fob or through your cell phone. And when it happens, you can turn it off completely so that you can't remote start. Climate control. When you do remote start, what happens? Will the climate automatically go to our last settings or will it automatically let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Seats and wheel. Will it automatically turn on the heated seat and the heated steering wheel? Yes or no? And then the duration of the remote start. So five, 10 or 15 minutes. And back from there. Next up, we've got a remote start setup, which we've already covered. Windows from there. So we've got the ability to remote open. Unfortunately, you do have to, rem you do have to manually close, but let's hop outside for a second to see how the remote open process works. We do have the ability to roll the windows down while using the key fob. All we're going to do is you can see there the unlock button. We're just going to press that twice. On the second press, you have to hold. So we're going to click one, two and hold. Watch this. Down they go. So amazing. Now, one thing to note is that it is powered down, but it's a manual lift up process. It's a really, really neat setting. I love the fact that you can do that inside of this vehicle. From there, we've got some basics for the wipers. So if we look there, we're going to, oh, helps if I actually click the button. There we go. So our courtesy wipe, always keep that one off. Our rain sensing wipers, what that's going to do is it's automatically going to adjust the speed of the wipers depending on how much rain is hitting the windshield. And we've got our rear wiper on. So what that means is when our wipers are on, if we put the car into reverse, it's automatically going to flip on that rear wiper for us. So definitely keep that one on. Power lift gate, do we want to enable or disable the switch on the outside of the vehicle? As we start to move down, we've got our lighting. So basic lighting options there. Give it a sec to load up. We've got our auto high beam. I do recommend keeping this one on. And the reason why is because it's automatically going to flip on our high beams for us. And then if the vehicle senses an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim them and then turn them off before bringing them back to life again. So really useful. Our auto lamp delay is when we lock the vehicle, do our lamps stay on for 10, 20 or 120 seconds. 
moving down from there, we've got basics for our locks. So auto unlock, miss lock, switch inhibitor, etc. Always make sure that you keep these things on. It's got to do with a few different things. So if we have the vehicle on and we leave with our key fob on us, it'll automatically lock the doors. It'll prevent people from being able to drive away, etc remote unlock when the vehicle's unlocked on the remote do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door so matter of security and personal preference there and next up we've got our mirrors so mirrors we've got a couple options there power folding i believe yeah auto fold is going to be the option there so when we lock the vehicle do the side mirrors fold make sure you keep that one on and last but not least, door keypad code. So this is something that Ford is notorious for in a good way. So you don't necessarily have to have the key fob with you in order to get into the vehicle. So all we have to do is enter a five digit code there. We can then set up multiple codes if you want to, but the look of that is actually just on the door. So if we look on the driver's side door there, as you can see, we've got some nice colored numbers there. So those do go away if you're not approaching the vehicle. So it's not constantly on draining battery power. Super useful feature there. And backing out of that screen, that's going to be it for our basic vehicle settings. Some general settings now. So we can change the language between English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit, liters per hundred, miles per gallon, PSI changes, the beeping that we're getting here. So if that beeping drives you absolutely bonkers, don't worry about it, you can hit this in order to turn it off. From there, if for whatever reason the vehicle's giving you any sort of an issue, so the screen specifically, we can do a master reset, or if your Ford Pass is giving you an issue, just hit reset there in order to bring you back to factory defaults. That's going to be the basics of our general settings. From there, we've got some options for the display. So the display is very, very big, but for some people it might be a little bit distracting. So we've got the ability to turn the display off completely, press in order to turn it back on again, or we can go into a basic calming screen. So with the time and then with the current date. So again, really, really nice. So in order to take away a little bit of that added distraction, if you find that the home screen is a little bit too much. From there, we've got the ability to change the background, the brightness, or we can change between our auto mode, which means that the vehicle is going to automatically determine if the daytime or the nighttime version should be showing up. But look at the nighttime for a second here. I love, love, love the look of this. But again, if you don't like blue, you can have it so that it's the daytime mode permanently. I would personally keep it on the nighttime mode all the time. But again, that's my own personal preference. Play around with this a little bit and you'll find one that you end up absolutely loving the look of. Give it a second there. It should update back to the daytime mode. There we go. Perfect. All right. As we start to move down, we've now got our valet mode. Valet mode essentially will lock the screen out unless you've entered a four digit number. So if we enter a four digit number, so something difficult like one, two, three, four, what will happen is you can see we now can't go anywhere on the screen until we re-enter that number. If you're using this, don't use one, two, three, four. Use something a little bit more challenging. From there, we've got some basic ambient light settings. So we've got the ability to select between different light sources, which is really, really cool. And that's going to show up in a few different places. Let's take a look at that now. Okay, now ambient lighting, we do have in a few different places. As you can see there, we do have it in the cup holders along the back. We also do have it in a few spots along the back there and just along the front. So if you take a look there, you can just kind of make up the lighting there. So that it is really, really nice. It is in a few different spots inside of the vehicle. What do we have next? Our navigation, which we've already gone through the navigation settings. We've also got seats. Now this is really, really cool. So we do have the option to go through a couple different things for seats. So we've got the ability to turn on massage chair seats, which is so nice, so comfortable. Lower rolling, upper rolling, circular cushion, full recover, relax mode, really, really nice. It's really cool and it's super comfortable really really comfortable like i love it so really really nice there there you do have the ability to either press that or there is a hot button along the side of the seat in order to turn it on in order to turn the massage seats off we're just going to hit the adjust button it'll turn it back off and restore it to your previously set settings from there we've got the ability to either turn it on for the driver or the passenger and they both do have the massage chair seats in the st model of the vehicle so really really neat as we start to move down, we've got a lot of other settings. So our basic connectivity, we can turn Bluetooth off or we can add a phone in or a Bluetooth enabled device from there. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. That's where we're going to add in a phone. Ford Pass Connect. So the vehicle does have a built in modem. So with Ford Pass Connect, you can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices, but you do need to have a data only plan through your mobile provider. So you can use that as a hotspot. Really, really neat. 
From there, we've got Wi-Fi and automatic updates. So I do recommend turning Wi-Fi on. And the reason why is because when you're at home, it'll automatically update the vehicle for you if you've got that setting enabled. So I do recommend turning that one on because one of the big reasons why, it'll automatically update the system software for you. So if there are any available downloads for the vehicle, any available software updates, it'll automatically do it. So I do recommend keeping that one enabled to make sure you're always up to date. From there, we've got some basic mobile apps, our Apple CarPlay, which we can easily get rid of, as well as some basic voice control. So the voice control settings are actually really neat. We've got three options there. I want you to listen to something for a second. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. Okay. So it's given us a message letting us know that it's changed the station. But watch what happens when we turn the advanced mode on. 97.7. Okay, we didn't get a confirmation message, but look at this, it's changed the station for us. So what happens is with the voice control, the advanced mode, we just won't get as many notifications. As we move down, we've got our phone confirmation, which I always recommend keeping that one turned on. Big reason why is because when we make a phone call, it'll say, will you call, like to call such and such person? So it's just a confirmation, making sure we're calling the right person. From there, we've got our voice command list. So when we press the voice command button, this is going to be the command list. So really a matter of preference, whether or not that one shows up, we can easily toggle it off if you don't like it. But let's dive right into it and figure out how we can set up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in the 2021 Explorer. Step number one, what we're going to do is take our USB cable and we're going to plug it into any available port. Make sure you plug it in the right way. And there we go. Step number one is complete. Starting off with Apple CarPlay, very straightforward process. We're going to take the other end of that USB cable and all we're going to do is just stick it into our phone. So really that simple and watch what happens. Oh, wait a minute, what do we have here? CarPlay lets you use your iPhone in a way that allows you to stay focused on the road. So in order to use CarPlay, we absolutely have to make sure that we continue and accept that message. So we're gonna continue there. And some basic privacy terms and conditions. So you need to make sure that you agree or else you won't be able to use CarPlay. There we go, as you can see there, we now have another option and that's going to be for 911 Assist. So I absolutely recommend turning this one on because what'll happen is if the phone's connected to the vehicle with this feature turned on, if it recognizes that you've been in a collision it'll automatically dial 911 for you so absolutely make sure you turn this one on and just hit continue okay next up so it's going to say unlock your phone and on my phone it said unlock and it's given me the option to enter in my passcode you can use touch id face id whatever the case may be but unlock your phone and look at this it's connected next up we're going to now as you can see there it's actually asking do I want to allow CarPlay to use, use Sync 3 while the phone is locked? Absolutely. So we're going to hit OK. So allow on that. And as you can see there, we are now fully connected. So we've got a number of different options there. We've got my phone, music, maps, messages, now playing and a number of other things. And that's one of the benefits here. We do have the ability to use Google Maps. So the vehicle itself is equipped with your regular factory navigation, but if you prefer to use Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze, whatever the case may be, you can use it directly through this middle screen on this beautiful big display. I love it. In order to get back to the home screen, we're just gonna press the home button there. It works almost like the home button in your iPhone. From there, you can look at some basic messages, audio podcast books. Now, certain things like LiveX Live, Spotify, etc., can work directly through the middle screen, which is really, really nice. So you don't have to worry about navigating through your phone in order to make that happen. So we go back to the home screen for a second there, and very straightforward. Now we can look at our basic Apple CarPlay preferences. Now we can turn it off. Now one of the benefits of turning it off is watch what happens. Now on the very bottom, we're back to our regular Sync 3 system. So we've got our home, audio, phone, etc. Turning CarPlay back on, we'll then navigate to, let's see, watch what happens. Wait for it, wait for it. Ah, oh, we're back to just our Apple CarPlay there. So if you need to have your phone charging up while you're using the Sync 3 system instead, all we have to do is make sure that in our CarPlay preferences, we just go preferences, turn it off, or we can completely remove the phone. So we won't be using CarPlay whatsoever, but the phone is still charged. And then in order to get rid of that message, all we're gonna do is just unplug and you're set to go. The ability to run Android Auto is the exact same process. We're going to take our USB cable, we're going to plug it into our Android device, and give it a sec, watch what happens. 
Oh, look at that. Android Auto extends the Android platform in a way that's purpose built for driving. So exact same thing as what we just saw for Apple CarPlay. Same thing, we need to hit continue in order for this to work. Basic privacy terms and conditions, same thing. We need to make sure we agree to this or else we won't be able to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. On my phone, as you can see there, so welcome to Android Auto, and it just wants me to unlock the phone. So just gonna fingerprint unlock and then hit the unlock button on the bottom. And same thing, so now we've got the ability, so it wants us to turn on Bluetooth in order to sync with the vehicle and allow access to my car. So yes, we're gonna do that and hit next. Watch what happens. There we go, wait. We are now fully connected and it's so simple. Now, very similar to what we just saw on the Apple side of things, we've got the ability to use either Waze or we can use Google Maps, whatever the case may be, directly through this middle screen. And we absolutely wanna make sure that we're automatically downloading our contacts, so we're gonna say yes to that. But look at this, we now have the Android device fully operational on that Sync 3 screen. So really cool, it wants access to my messages here on the phone as well, so we're gonna allow that. And as you can see, we're now connected. I can run off of Waze, I can run off of Google Maps, listen to podcasts, go to my phone, calendar, news, number of things, so many options, I love it. We can flip between whatever map we wanna use as well. But if we go to Android Auto Preferences for a second, we can turn it off completely, which very similar to what we just finished seeing in Andro or Apple CarPlay, brings us back to our regular sync system. And then we can just completely remove the phone from the vehicle. As you can see, it's now completely disconnected. Hey, now as we start to move down, few things to look at. We've got the ability to turn the audio on or off. We can use this in order to be able to increase the volume. Are officially. Oh, very, very neat there. As we start to move over, we've got the ability to skip between songs or radio stations. We can tune this way. We can tune directly on the screen or we can tune using our voice. Really, really cool. This button is going to be for that beeping that we start to get as we back up and get closer to an obstacle. You can turn that on or off. From there, we've got our four-way blinkers, and then we've also got our camera button. So camera button, so as you can see there, we've got a nice, beautiful 360 camera. Pressing this gives us more of a front view, and then one more time is a front 180 degree view. So really, really useful if you're pulling out of underground parking or a tight space and wanna make sure that there's nobody that you're potentially going to run into. Pressing that hotkey again in order to get rid of it. As we start to move down, so a few things, we've got our max windshield defroster. We've got the ability to select between whether the air is going to our windshield face or feet. We can either press close or press that hot key again. We can turn the system on or off, turn on our air conditioner, max air conditioner. From there, we've got dual zone climate control. So we do have the ability to have it a different temperature for the driver and passenger. And from there, we've also got our auto settings. So let the vehicle automatically determine what the cabin temperature should be. We've got our rear window defroster. We've got our menu button, which is a more advanced version of this button. So I don't know why they've got the two buttons. I think it should just be one or the other because really the only thing that gets added is dual. So I think that they could probably get rid of one of these ones, but that's neither here nor there. From there, we've got our circulation button. And what that's going to do is that's going to either, with it on, circulate air inside of the cabin. With the button off, what it's going to do is it's going to pull air from outside and bring it into the vehicle. Other things to point out, we do have heated and cooled front seats for those driver seats, so the front two driver passenger, and we've also got our heated steering wheel hotkey. As we start to move down, we've got a little tray which also has our cigarette lighter adapter, as well as a mini or USB, as well as our micro USB ports. Closing that down, now one nice thing Ford's thought of, a couple nice places in order to put our phone. So we've got the ability to store a phone there, or if you've got a phone that supports wireless charging, there also is a wireless charge pad in the back. So really, really neat, as you can see there, we are wireless charging. So really, really cool that we've got that as an option there as well. Moving down, as you can see there, we do have a few cup holders, and then we've got our selector switch. So we can change between our park, reverse, neutral, drive, or by being in drive, we can also select our manual mode, which will give us better control over the paddle shifters. As we start to move down a little bit more, we've got our park button, so an electronic park brake. We've got our auto hold setting. So with this setting turned on, what'll happen is, is it's automatically, if we come to a stop and take our foot off the brake, it'll hold us into place. Our little A button there, that's our auto start stop. So the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine if we're stopped for a prolonged period of time. We've got our park assist. So park assist has a couple different options. So we've got either parallel park out, parallel park, or our perpendicular park. So we've got a few different options there that we can switch between. We can either X out of it down there or press that parking button again. Let's hop outside the vehicle for a second to figure out how that system works. Using Park Assist inside of the Explorer is a very straightforward process. What we're gonna do is start off by pressing this P button. 
So when we press P, that's step number one. Now watch what happens. Park Assist is activated and the vehicle can help us out with parallel parking. It can help us out with perpendicular parking or parallel park out. Now what we're gonna do is figure out how the perpendicular park works. It's a very straightforward process. It actually works the same for the parallel and the perpendicular park. By default, it's going to look on the right hand side, but by using that turn signal and looking to the left, watch what happens. It's going to flip it out to look to the left instead. So left versus the right depends on what you're doing with that turn signal stick. So we're going to look on the spot for the right hand side. So parallel or for park assist, I should say, all we're going to do is follow the directions on the screen. So step number one, we've pressed the button. Step number two, figure out if we want parallel or perpendicular park. Step number three, follow the directions. So it wants us to pull forward. So let's drive forward until it tells us it's found a spot. Oh. Okay, so it said that it found a spot. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it into neutral. And we're going to hold the park button there, foot off the brake. And the vehicle itself is doing everything right now. I love it. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally just pressing this single button in order for this to actually work. It is so, so cool. And as you can see there, we've got a little countdown timer as well. It's going in between what it's doing next. So it gives you a little bit of an indication on what's happening and how long it's going to take. But the vehicle itself is parking itself. All I'm doing is literally just holding down the P button here. So it is a little bit of a slower process than I'd like to see. It would be kind of nice if it was a little bit quicker, which I think would be a little bit more realistic in real world situations. But here we go. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. So cool. So cool. And boom. Would you look at that? We're done. It's really that simple to use the, the park assist inside of the Explorer. From there, we've got the ability to turn traction control on or off, and we've also got our hill descent control. So really, really useful if you're gonna be going downhill with a load. So you turn that on, and the vehicle's going to keep you at a certain speed, and all you have to do is worry about the steering, which is really cool. From there, we've got a series of different drive modes. So as you see there, as we select through, we've got our normal mode, slippery, trail, and then our deep snow and sand. And as we start to move the other way, we've got our eco mode, as well as our sport mode. And then finally, our tow haul mode. So it's going to do different things to the vehicle depending on what mode you've selected. From there, I've already pointed out that wireless charging pad. And then we've also got a little holder there. So a little bit of storage space underneath with another cigarette lighter adapter inside. Next up, let's look at the steering wheel. So tons of things there, but beautiful, beautiful digital dash. I love the look of this thing. But again, I love blue, which is why I think this thing looks so, so sharp. But let's start off on the left-hand side. So the vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control, so we can turn the system on easily there. Now this one is a distance indicator. So it lets you choose between how far or how close you are to the vehicle in front of you there. This next one is going to be that lane centering system. So that's the one that's going to physically turn and pull you back into your lane. And from there, we've also got the ability to, as you can see there, turn the system on or off. So there, if we press the distancing indicator, watch what happens. Let's actually get you a little bit closer there to see as we move that distance indicator there. So that's, as I mentioned, going to let you to determine how close or how far you are away from the vehicle that's in front of you. From there, we've got the ability to select. So once we get up to the speed that we'd like, we're going to press set either way, middle button to reset or the X to cancel it out. This one to turn it back off again. As we start to move down, we've got the ability to either increase or decrease the volume, you go. or we can completely mute by pressing that button. So we've got a basic back button, menu button, okay to scroll through, middle button there. So this button, you, what you do is you'd lift it up and down to scroll through the screens, press the okay button, and then we've also got a menu button. So let's see how that works in tandem. Let's actually watch this for a second. So we'll zoom in a little bit more. So we've got a few different screen options that are available. So as you can see there, we've got our trip indicator. To reset the trip, all we're gonna do is press and hold the okay button. So we're gonna press and hold that button there. The one, two, three, and reset. From there, if we press menu, we've got the ability to select between different screens. So our calming screen, fuel economy, different trip counters, tire pressure, all wheel drive, etc. Pressing back, we can then go to our audio. 
audio we can change between either AM, FM, Sirius, XM, or if our phone was connected, it would show up there. If we look at navigation, we can navigate to our home address, previously saved destinations, favorites, etc. And then if our phone was connected, we would have phone options that would show up there. Unfortunately, my phone is currently not connected there. And we've also got some basic settings. So we've got our oil life reset and then our display setup. So we can show miles per hour. And we've also got the ability to show the tachometer as well. So really, really nice that we've got the ability to tweak some of those settings out. As we start to move down now, because we can see that tire pressure monitor that we've selected with our fuel economy and different options. But again, as we press this menu button again, it gives us the option to set certain things up. So we've got the ability, the big one is to display, looking at the display setup, but then more importantly is selecting the screens because we can go to a calming screen now. And let's do the intelligent four wheel drive. If we go back to the main menu now, and let's scroll through. So now all of a sudden we've got the intelligent four wheel drive there. And if we move down, We've now got that calming screen, so it just keeps things basic and simple. A couple other things to point out along the steering wheel, as you can see there, we've got our ability to change between either songs or radio stations. We can answer a phone call or hang up on a phone call. And then we've got our voice button. So that voice button is going to do a couple things. You can either navigate, you can make a phone call, change the radio station, etc. Looking up a little bit more, we've got our minus button and our plus button. That's going to give you the ability to change gears. We've got our one stick there, which is going to be for our high beams. So we can flick the high beams on from there. And along the side, we, as you can see, we've got a little button on the end there. That's going to be our lane keeping system. So with the lane keeping system on, watch what happens there. So lane keeping system's on, when it's off, our speedometer's in the middle back on again it shoots off to the left side so the system itself is turned on right now but it doesn't actively come on until you hit about 62 kilometers an hour you know that it's on because those lanes will go green letting you know that your bowling lanes essentially are active looking on the right stick so this one does have rain sensing wipers so this is going to adjust how sensitive the wipers are to rain that's hitting the windshield Looking on the far side of it, as you can see there, we also do have the ability to turn on our rear window wiper. So very straightforward there in order to turn that on. We're going to pull towards us in order to work the front windshield wipers. And we're going to take that stick and we're going to push away in order to work the back. So very straightforward there. Now, one of the things that I do love about the ST, as I mentioned, the beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel, we've got the ST emblem there as well, but it also is power adjustable. So it is a really, really nice steering wheel. I do think that it is a great setup. As we start to move up overhead, as you can see there, we do have the ability to program in our garage door opener code. If we do have that at home, we've got our sunglasses holder. And then we've got some different controls for the cabin lights. So this is going to turn all cabin lights on. This one's going to be whether or not the lights turn on when the doors are open. From there, we've got the ability to control the shade for that twin panel sunroof. So one button press opens it up halfway. Second button press opens it up that full way. So full shade there, which is beautiful. And then from there, we've got our controls. So we've got the ability either to just vent, which will just open up the top a little bit, or we can close the vent and then we can fully open up that sunroof instead. Beautiful, look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And then single button press in order to be able to close it back up from there. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2021 Ford Explorer ST, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below. And please, as I said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you share it with your social network. Consider subscribing because of all of the great giveaways that I've got planned. But until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.